Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. Hi everyone, so today we're going to talk about a basic approach to the MRA brain or MR angiography of the brain. Um, these sorts of studies can be used to evaluate for aneurysms, um, you know, arterial stenosis occlusion and other vascular anomalies. Um, so let's, I'll just go through a little bit of uh, the overall, you know, uh, structure of how we're going to approach this and then take us through a step-by-step -step kind of basic um, sort of way in which to, uh, you know, uh, start evaluating these sort of e exams. So uh, one of the things to get a sense of to begin with is, you know, what's going on with the patient, the context of the study. It's important to remember that um, sometimes these will be done with different techniques. This video is going to focus on a non-contrast time of flight sort of uh, technique for acquisition. In some instances and in some institutions, you'll do also pre and post contrast imaging, um, in particular if looking uh, for res residual lumen of a called aneurysm or a previously treated aneurysm um, and kind of to evaluate, um, you know, there's, there may be additional sort of techniques that will be done and kind of um, outside of the scope of this exam, such as vessel wall imaging. Um, and you, so you just want to get a sense as to really what type of exam is being done because that's going to, you know, uh, impact the, the different sort of steps we're going to undertake. Um, kind of also big picture um, to think about is that, at different institutions, you'll acquire different sequences. In our institution, uh, we frequently do uh, DWI sequences um, and localizers as well. Um, and on the time of flight uh, sequence, uh, or like, you know, the MRA images, we will see uh, anatomy that is not just the vessels. So it's important to rec remember that, you know, we're you're going to be able to pick up incidentals and potentially explanatory um findings if the patient is having symptoms on DWI within the brain, within the, you know, uh, other tissues incidentally imaged on the, um, you know, on the study. And it's not necessarily, you know, it's not necessarily the case that everything is going to be just in the vasculature, okay? So in terms of overall uh, structure, you know, understanding first the patient, the indications, it, it, and it, it's going to be particularly important if there is known abnormalities such as aneurysms, vascular abnormalities, to know where those are, how many, prior treatments, complications, previously, any new symptoms. And you want to take a look at any prior angiographic imaging, whether conventional angiography, CTA, head and neck, even prior MRAs or MRI brain. Um, you will see the same anatomy on various other studies, and it's kind of good to have a sense, a baseline sense as to what you're walking into. Um, and from there, we'll, we'll, you know, you'll take a look at the study as a whole, take a look at simulations. We'll go through localizers. Um, and then, you know, at our institution, you know, we'll go through the DWI, such as you would in any, you know, regular MRI. We'll go through the arterial anatomy, and I'll take you through basically, a, you know, a big picture idea of looking at the rest of the study in terms of seeing if there's any incidentals that are just picked up within the field of view and within the sequences. All right. Here is kind of what um, uh, an MRA uh, non-contrast, like time of flight sort of study looks like at our um, institution. Um, and one of the first things I'll do once I've kind of done my homework and understand what's going on with the patient, any known abnormality, is to take a look at the localizer images, which we have here. And it's kind of, you know, as with any, you know, it's good to go through and make sure, you know, uh, look at all the structures. I will frequently use like a quick outside-in approach with the, you know, these are sagittal T1 pre-contrast. And just basically look at all the extracranial soft tissues, um, osseous structures, the midline structures. Just get a gross, you know, sense as to the, the overall anatomy of the intracranial compartment, the upper visualized cervical spine, craniocervical junction, those sorts of things. You know, and then um, if you have different um, kind of, uh, you know, uh, acquisition series within the localizers, um, you want to make sure that, especially anatomy, that you're not going to see on the other sequences, you at least, um, you know, put some eyes on, particularly like, you know, at the lower neck where we might see something we don't see on uh, other images. Okay. All right. So once you've taken a look at the localizers, I, I like to, again, be kind of, um, you know, thorough and make sure that I'm looking at everything. And even before I look at the angiographics, um, you know, the the, the vascular uh, focused images, we'll go through the DWI um, 
provided image that we got here. So here's kind of the B0. Um, and, you know, just going through and, and as with usual, I use like an outside in approach. Um, and remember that the B0, if you if we don't have uh, SWI images and, and the MRA brain is the only thing we're doing, if you need to sort out any susceptibility, any sort of blood product, for example, um, this can be used as kind of like a quote unquote poor man susceptibility image, you know, a suboptimal kind of um, susceptibility weighted thing. And then similarly with the DWI, you know, also the, sorry, the um, the B1000 or the high B value um, DWI using, again, uh, you know, what I will do like an outside in approach looking at the calvarium, the extra cranial soft tissues, you know, extra axial, um, you know, spaces, CSS spaces, and then go through the brain parenchyma um, slice by slice and just being careful that we're not missing something. I, we have definitely seen instances of um, unexpected acute sub acute stroke on DWI done for routine follow-up of aneurysm. So just make sure you look closely. Make sure, especially things where patients have complex histories and we, it's un, excuse me, it's unclear what's going on, that we do look at these. Um, and not every abnormality we see is going to be stroke, but we're going to, you know, uh, you're going to see, um, you know, sometimes something explanatory on, on DWI. And of course, um, we're, you're going to want to correlate with ADC. And then, you know, oftentimes it's a good uh, practice to go through these in similar fashion as just, you know, your, your regular um, DWI set of images, but just to at least correlate, um, if not to do a full search on these as well. Um, and at that point, we have basically covered, um, you know, the, uh, you know, we've, we've gotten up to the point where we can start taking a look at the MRA images, and this is again a time of flight. What I like to do is pull these into an NPR viewer so that we have them in multiple projections. Um, you'll note that this field of view does not necessarily cover the entirety of the intracranial compartment. It's kind of focused on the circle of Willis. Um, so it's actually important to know, you know, or at least to keep in mind that this field of view. Um, you know, if there is an abnormality that's outside or more peripheral that, you know, we are conscious about requesting the field view covers that area and also recognizing there's a limitation as to, you know, catching things that are just much higher, um, you know, if the field of view is not the entirety of the intracranial compartment. It's kind of essential uh, to get a sense of. Um, I particularly like going through different parts of the anatomy on different projections um, using both, you know, thin sections. So these are kind of uh, sub you know, sub centimeter, um, no, I'm sorry, uh, even less than a millimeter thickness here, uh, slices. And then it can be, it, depending on your packs or availability, you know, ability to do so, create MIP images, um, and then also uh, go through and create kind of thicker section for different parts of the anatomy. Um, as we go through the uh, arterial anatomy, um, and I'll kind of speak more specifically about vessel vessel by vessel, um, you know, we're we're keeping in mind that we're looking for um, you know loss of signal, narrowing. We're looking for um, you know abnormal signal that's beyond the usual confines of where we expect the vessels. You know, uh, in terms of um, uh, vascular malformations, and then you know, in terms uh, outpouchings or fusiform dilatation. I like to actually look at aneurysms, and it's and like an, an, uh, as a separate thing because they can be they can be very subtle, um, and so uh, I kind of do that as a second pass. But usually, the the way that I go through the anatomy is to first start with like the anterior, um, and you know, the anterior, uh, what is it, circulation first, and I follow the vessels, you know, the the ICA up to the carotid siphons, into the bifurcation, and then ultimately, for, you know, first to the, and I'll, I like to do this on kind of multiple different techniques, usually like first the MIPS, and then I follow up the, into the ACAs, and all the way as far as I can, into the M1s, the MCAs, and I'll do that like side by side, you know, first right, then left, and I'll, and I'll try and, you know, um, correlate across multiple projections. Usually the Axials and coronals are a nice combination for the anterior circulation. Um, you can see here that this kind of lays them out nicely along different parts. I'm particularly careful to look at the carotid siphon area, the, the kind of like the ICA cavernous segment, and then this portion up into the bifurcation, the communicating area, um, at least on two uh, projections, because, you know, subtle abnormality here can be easy to miss. Uh, you know, a aneurysms or kind of issues with the, you know, uh, carotid terminus um, are, can be difficult to see on just the axial. So I try and make sure I correlate here. And then I different, you know, and then everyone has their own kind of different techniques. But as, as I kind of get out further into like the 
the lateral aspect, sometimes the MIPS are useful. You know, I'll do this again on both sides for the anterior circulation. Um, yeah, and then following that as far as out as I can on the, uh, you know, uh, into the more peripheral vessels. And once I've covered the entirety of, you know, the anterior circulation, you know, getting a sense as to whether I see any obvious kind of connectors, um, you know, the posterior communicating arteries between the anterior and posterior. And then we're going to move to the posterior circulation, in which I kind of like to do most of the work on the, um, uh, on, on the coronals. And here I'm going to kind of go through our, our thins, you know, looking at one vert and the other up into the basilar. And then, you know, just kind of getting a sense. You know, it, it can be difficult. We don't always see the piece, you know, the picas and the icas, sometimes with variant ica pica complexes um, to keep in mind, uh, you, know, uh, you know, are we really missing a vessel or is one prominent here um, because of a variant anatomy? But just tracking the um, uh, vertebrals up into the basilar, up into, and then seeing what vessels we can there, uh, and then the kind of configuration of the basilar becomes, you know, the uh, gives off the you know, the SCAs, following those out as far as we can, and the PCAs, um, and then you know, um, following those as far as back as we can using multiple projections um, and and kind of different techniques between thins and thicks, uh, thick images. Uh, the sagittals I generally use for problem solving can be particularly good, again, at the carotid you know, terminus for the anterior circulation, and then it can help you follow out some of the uh, branch vessels in the posterior circulation. Um, it can also be particularly good for uh, kind of the M3, M4, more peripheral branches um, of the MCA, um, again, as more so as problem solving, uh, at least, at least in, in the way that I approach things. Um, one of the things that is important to keep in mind is that vascular occlusions and abnormalities are f more frequently missed uh, in the MCA distribution past the M1 segment. So out here is where it can be kind of, you know, you want to be able to delineate very carefully, um, you know, separately the superior and inferior divisions of the MCA, uh, uh, the, the M2, um, and then kind of similarly on the other side, and that you got to be very careful about enumerating how many anterior uh, cerebral arteries there are, you know, different, there's variants where there's only one, where there's two, where there's an early trifurcation. Just be careful to, you know, correlate that with prior and make sure that we're really understanding how many we're expecting. Um, and, you know, if that there's not a vessel cut off um, that's kind of hiding in the, 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 their kind of course, which can be kind of tortuous back and forth um, across that midline. Um, that can be, you know, uh, and, and then another potential pitfall to avoid is that sometimes I think, you know, at least on these MRA images, you know, free, you know, you're, you're, you're less likely to get venous contamination, but sometimes the, um, some deep venous structures can, can, can flow pretty close to where the PCAs are. Um, and just to make sure we're not confusing, um, any sort of signal and venous structures for that. And, and, you know, cause that can be a potential pitfall as well. Um, I like to make sure that I at least enumer enumerate in my own head the key, the key areas where we you know most likely to find aneurysms and most likely to miss aneurysms. So you know we're thinking about ACOM complex, MCA bifurcation. We're looking at you know uh, PCOM takeoff as most common, and then just making sure that areas at branch points at the posterior circulation, at the basal tip, and at the um, you know, carotid terminus, those are very easy areas to miss because they're difficult to see on the axials. Just making sure that we enumerate to ourselves if we're looking for aneurysms or just during our kind of screening for aneurysms that we're here at least specifically looking for those and, and getting a sense as to whether there's a concern for peripheral aneurysms and making sure that we don't miss those. Those are very easy to miss as well. Um, you know, you know, that basically takes us through a search of the anatomy and that uh, the arterial anatomy. And just to remember that you, you if you have pre and post contrast images to also repeat that pattern on the post contrast images um, with special attention to any areas that have been treated, like treated aneurysms, treated vascular malformations. And if you do have some availability, either, you know, it, even through suboptimal localizers, um, or through, you know, any T1 pre-contrast to see if there's inherent T1 at the base of any previously treated aneurysms um, and just to could differentiate that from flow-related signal that you might see on MRA images. Um, so uh, that, you know, that can kind of cover mostly the arterial anatomy, but it's especially important also, you know, we do see a ton of 
brain of other non-vascular structures here. So I at least like to make sure that I do a quick look, you know, at the extracranial soft tissues, the upper neck, you know, the the orbits, the you know, the, you know, the, the, the scalp, you know, all this that's surrounding, you know, I look at the the osseous structures, the skull base really quickly, you know, the CSF spaces, um, and then the brain parenchyma. It's, we have definitely seen several instances of just, you know, abnormality that would not be subtle um, if you were looking for it, but that can be very easily passed because it's a, a very simple pitfall to go through and just look at the vascular structures on MRI. Okay, so just as an important um, reminder. Uh, and then, you know, in terms of last checks and things that you may want to think about as we start closing out this sort of study is that it's very easy to fall into a pattern when there is known abnormality, known aneurysms or something you're following study to study um, to just look at those and, you know, just comment on those and stop kind of looking and, and fall into the tra trap of, you know, um, satisfaction of search, right? But you, you know, it's very, especially you find one aneurysm, the patient's at risk for new aneurysms or interval development of aneurysms. Um, you know, so it's, it's very important to continue being wary and make sure you go through the full search pattern on each study um, and kind of try to resist the temptation to uh, be lulled into that false sense of, um, uh, you know, security about things being stable and, you know, uh, you know, following things you've seen before. So, you know, that basically covers the whole, you know, process. And just to give you a, a quick recap of how uh, to approach the MRA brain, you know, uh, we're looking at the whole context of the patient, understanding what has been followed up to this point and what we want to comment on in terms of potential change and, under, you know, known abnormality. We're looking at the overall study, what sort of technique, what sequences we've got, any limitations of field of view. You're going to look through the localizers and the, you know, non-vascular anatomy on that that's you're not seen on other things. We'll go through the DWI or other sequences that are provided, um, kind of diligently making sure that we look at, you know, every part of the anatomy and then going through the arterial vascular using different projections, you know, MIP versus thick, you know, average slices, thins, and using that where, you know, different projections where advantageous in the anatomy and being, you know, and then I, you know, I get, I like to keep in mind the errors where there are frequent blind spots where we can miss things, where aneurysm was common and most easily missed, and then making sure that we look at everything else in the anatomy that is on the, even just, you know, um, even the parts of the, uh, the anatomy on the MRA images who are usually suppressed or a little bit washed out, making sure we look at all of that as well. Um, and then finally, bring that all together, um, making sure we do a complete evaluation on each of these exams.